All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Steve Malzberg Show. And uh, quite contrary to what you heard, um, Tim Camp will be with us next hour. Uh, Tom DeLay will join us uh, momentarily on the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, so um, we'll get ready for that interview. I can't wait to speak to, uh, to the former congressman and former uh, majority leader of the House of Representatives. And one of the things that we'll talk about, I'm sure, is the Supreme Court ruling today uh, making big news in a five to four decision coming down on the side of free speech and determining and ruling that having uh, uh, limits on the total amount of money that an individual can contribute to candidates, political parties, and PACs, political action committees, is unconstitutional. Now, you remember what Barack Obama did when the Citizens United case came down. Uh, the next time he gave the State of the Union, he scolded in unprecedented fashion. He scolded the Supreme Court of the United States during his State of the Union, and it ca caused Samuel Alito to shake his head no uh, in the face of that scolding and phony accusations against the President of the United States, well, the left isn't happy now either. Uh, I can't wait to hear what uh, Obama has to say in his next State of the Union, although it's, it's almost, you know, it's, it's 10 months away. But it's interesting. Harry Reid has already taken to the floor of the Senate and talked about the Koch brothers, and we're going to talk more about the Koch brothers later on. And get, we have a gimme five on the attack on the Koch brothers as un-American uh, by the left. And it's, it's funny, it's hysterical, because I'm, I'm reading a story here how the son of George Soros, the son of one of the largest liberal donors in history, um, was campaigning against money in politics. And here's the, the, the ironic part and the nonsensical part, and the part that the media won't tell you. Uh, according to uh, the story on, uh, on Newsbusters, while he was spearheading a campaign against money in politics, he was simultaneously vice chairman and director of the board of his father's multi-billion dollar Open Society Foundation, OSF. In 2011 alone, while Jonathan Soros was vice chairman and director of the board of OFS, how much money do you think they gave to blatantly open, liberal organizations alone? $58 million. Yet, he was spearheading a campaign uh, to take money out of politics. It is such hypocrisy, ladies and gentlemen. And for Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer and the others and CBS News to make villains out of the Koch brothers, for Harry Reid to go to the floor of the Senate, for the majority leader of the U.S. Senate to go to the floor of the Senate and call two wealthy businessmen, successful businessmen from Kansas, un-American because he doesn't agree with them, while you got the Soroses running around the country and, and, and giving hundreds of millions of dollars, and Bill Maher giving a million to Obama and other wacky left-wing people doing the same. It's, it's what have we become? What, what is accepted discourse now? And I'm not talking about the media. I'm talking about the majority leader of the U.S. Senate. All right, Tom DeLay is here, and I want to lead into our interview with uh, the former congressman. I don't get it. With this. Why are folks working so hard for people not to have health insurance? Why are they so mad about the idea of folks having health insurance? Many of the tall tales that have been told about this law have been debunked. There are still no death panels. <laughs> Armageddon has not arrived. Yeah, tell it to the millions of people who have horror stories. What is he, Harry Reid? Unbelievable. All right, joining us now, uh, as promised, is uh, our friend uh, Tom DeLay, former House Majority Leader and former Congressman from the great state of Texas. Congressman, always great to talk to you. I mean, this was his victory lap. Uh, he had a little, uh, you know, pep in his step, and uh, Biden standing behind him, and he went on and on and on after they announced 7.1 million people have signed up for Obamacare. Well, it's just, it's, it's so tragic. It's it's uh, it's laughable if it weren't so tragic. I, I 
uh, his Armageddon's coming in November uh, in these midterm elections, and then again in 2016. The American people have lost all cr uh, uh, confidence in this president. Uh, they've lost trust in him. He has no credibility. And then he goes out and makes a fool of himself like he did yesterday. Uh, it, it just boggles the mind. Uh, he, the reason people are against Obamacare is they don't want the federal government to be involved in their health care or in their lives. He just doesn't get it. Well, I, I'm, you know, I, I think you would agree he gets it. He just won't, he, you know, he's got to put on this front. But here's the thing. Um, you know, we've known all along, and the administration has uh, admitted as much, that they don't know the exact number of people who they claim have signed up uh, but haven't paid premiums. So if you haven't paid your premium, you don't have insurance. Now, the insurance industry is estimated that's about 20%. So you take 20% off the 7 million right off the bat. But the Rand Corporation, um, it was reported today, uh, has done a numbers study. It's been kept under wraps, and they suggest that barely 858,000 people are actually newly insured and paid up. In other words, we had millions of people lose their insurance, right? Last year, the end of last year, they got the cancellation notices, six million. So it makes sense. They got seven million, they say, signed up now. You had six million lose it. Rand says there's less than a million people who are newly insured who are paid up. Well, there's another question that is not asked of the president. What happened to the 30 to 50 million that were uninsured that were the cause of passing Obamacare? Uh, they're all proud over the fact that 7 million have, have signed up. We don't know who they are, but may, let's say 7 million have. Well, that leaves 23 million uninsured that haven't signed up, or as much as, you know, 43 million, as some people have said. So the whole reason for this law is, is absolutely out the window. Um, and secondly, those that are signing up that the RAND Corporation is talking about is all signing up to the entitlement portion of, of this program because most of those that were canceled are picking up uh, Obamacare through the exchanges and being subsidized. So you got the the un, the insured that have policies that are canceled are being subsidized. The others are being subsidized. Plus the huge increase in in Medicaid. We have increased entitlements and welfare in this country in the last few months by huge numbers. Uh, that's going to cost us trillions of dollars. That's what we ought to be focused on. Not that, that they signed up seven million people. Is that their taxpayers are going to be on the hook for trillions of dollars, and then the, the uh, Obama administration is going to control our health care. They already are by setting standards, by saying who can be on and who can't be on. But it's it's just absolutely amazing that the American, but the American people are figuring out. Yeah, and obviously, out. obviously, by your your uh, Armageddon prediction, uh, you still believe that this is. Uh, this is a, a, a losing issue for the Democrats uh, come November and come 016. No doubt about it. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt about it. Because there's more, every month there's going to be some more bad news. Right, right. And for and, him to stand there, I'm sorry to interrupt, for him to stand there and say that the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the horror stories have been debunked. I mean, again, you got these people every day that come out and they talk about their kids and themselves and their doctors and their hospitals. I mean, he's calling them all liars. Well, and, and, and those that have bought insurance haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> That's They've got a five to $6,000 a year deductible. Yep, yep. yep. I, I mean, how are you going to pay for that? Wait till those so, kids, those, those kids, the 27-year-old, 28-year-old kids, uh, you know, who are buying their insurance for $100 a month, if that's even possible, and they go to the doctor and they get a bill for the full amount, and they'll, they'll call up and say, but I got insurance, and they'll say, yeah, but this is your deductible. They'll say, what? It's just insane. I, I want to move on, uh, Congressman. Um, sure. There was a Supreme Court decision, five to four decision today, uh, that, uh, that said that limits on total amounts of money that individuals could give to candidates, political parties, and political action committees, unconstitutional, violation of freedom of speech, so they lifted those restrictions. Um, and, of course, the Democrats are screaming, Koch brothers, Koch brothers, like they've been doing uh, for the past six months. Uh, your reaction? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled. Anytime that uh, freedom is protected, 
I'm very excited about it. Um, and so, uh, and I know the Democrats are upset about it because um, uh, it's they they've used limits to to limit the ability for Republicans and conservatives to raise money. So this is going to uh, open up uh, a lot more opportunities to raise more money. Uh, you, you notice they don't scream and yell that there's no limits on unions. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, so I, I, I wonder if the president is going to, uh, at the next State of the Union, uh, mock the court again as he did after the Citizens United case. If you, I'm sure you recall that one. Yeah, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Uh, anything they can do to, to stifle or intimidate people from giving to Republicans, they're going to try one way or another. That's, me, that's how they operate. Let me let me ask you this. Um, you know, we're, we're we're standing here on the, uh, uh, possibly the eve, any day it could be, the eve of uh, when uh, Russia uh, moves further into Ukraine. Uh, we've heard that uh, from the NATO commander today in Europe that uh, it could happen any day now. Uh, we're just sitting back and waiting and watching, and, and you know, and this president uh, has basically, according to so many of the people I've talked to, and from my interpretation of his remarks as a, as a person who looks at it in a non-military uh, expertise, non-expert non in the military field, he, he's saying to Putin, go do what you want to do. We can't. We're not going to stop you. Well, maybe this is what he meant. But when he when he told him uh, uh, told him that uh, wait for the election to be over. Right. It'll be more flexible. Take care of him. Yeah. It'll be more flexible. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do for the next two and a half years with this president being being president. Uh, foreign policy is in the toilet. Um, uh, Russia is running wild. Who knows what North Korea is going to do now with South Korea? It's starting to break open, and this president is still president and will be for another two and a half years. It's scary. And you know what, Congressman? Uh, the Palestinian spokesman, uh, John Kerry, uh, got, got a slap in the face yesterday um, uh, because uh, Abbas, as, as, the, as they're trying to bribe Israel by releasing Jonathan Pollard, and I'd love your remarks on that real quick. Uh, Abbas is filling out forms to go back to the U.N. for unilateral recognition of the state of Palestine by the U.N. So he, he, he dissed Kerry and Obama. And who's been bigger supporters of, of Abbas than Kerry and Obama? And, and where is the Congress in all this? You know, the Congress could be standing up passing resolutions against what Kerry is doing in Israel and what Obama uh, is doing in Israel. You're against the, Poll you're against the Pollard uh, th uh, deal? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you can't you you can't bribe the Israelis into peace. It it just doesn't work. I mean, giving up land for peace didn't work either, did it? So uh, the Israelis need to stand up, and and we need to support them, and we need to be pushing back on the Obama administration. This is outrageous, and it undermines the safety and security of Israel. Congressman, always great to talk to you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Steve. Congressman Tom DeLay, ladies and gentlemen, former House Majority Leader, Congressman from the former Congressman from the great state of Texas. We left no stone unturned, if you notice that. No stone unturned. Uh, we covered just about everything, and we're going to continue the conversation on the events of the day with the Malsberg panel, uh, which will be coming your way next. And I'm not even going to tell you who's on it. I'm going to make you wait and see right here on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television.